Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 5 in the May 2023 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's take a read. The following is a list of some balances which were extracted from the books of the Caribbean Teachers Cooperative Credit Union. Whoops, sorry. Cooperative Credit Union for the year ended 30th April 2023. Right, so membership fees due, short-term loans to members, building at cost, investments, motor vehicles at cost, the existing provision for depreciation on the motor vehicles, all right, not including the current year's depreciation, clearly. Okay, um, accruals, members' deposits, repayable at short notice. Well, these are current liabilities. Bank balance, education, statutory reserve, share capital, Undistributed surplus, 1st of May 2022. So that's the opening surplus. And then the current surplus for the year. Interesting. Additional notes. The following adjustments had not been taken into consideration in arriving at the surplus for the year. Okay. So the building insurance expense had not been adjusted for a prepayment. So we're supposed to take out prepayments, which means we would have subtracted an expense for insurance that was too high. So probably too low. Hmm. Motor vehicles were not depreciated for the current year. The policy is to use the reducing balance method at the return of this month. Okay, so well, if we didn't, we didn't charge depreciation, the profit would be too high. Okay. Uh, the board of directors decided to transfer 12000 to the Education Statutory Reserve Fund. Okay, well, that'll go in the appropriation account. All right. Um, okay, let's take a look at the requirement. It says, use the following form to be a statement of corrected surplus for the Caribbean Teachers Cooperative Credit Union for the year ended 30th April 2023. Right, so you have a little statement here, it's just for four marks. Okay, so the surplus for the year is 75.9. So let's start there, right? Um, but of course, please don't forget to head up, right? Name of the entity, name of what you're doing, and the period to which it applies, right? Now, again, there could be some confusion here because they're asking for the surplus, right? Um, so the surplus is basically what they would call their net profit, their version on their, their name for net profit. So this is just going to take into consideration item A and item B. Item C will go in the appropriation account. Okay. So item A was that the building insurance expense had not been adjusted for the prepayment. Right? So we're going to add back that 500 because again, prepayments are supposed to be subtracted from the expense item before you deduct it in the income and expenditure account. They didn't subtract or didn't reduce the expense appropriately, which means the expense was too high, which means they subtracted too much expense and profit was too low. So to fix that, you have to increase profit by adding back that prepayment item. So profit, yeah? And then the, the depreciation, right? Well, we have to subtract the depreciation. Now, they said reducing balance method. So you have to go up to the trial balance. So motor vehicles at cost is 140. You minus the existing provision, 20. 140 minus 20 is 120. And then you find, as they say here, 25%. Which 25% of 120 is 30,000. Yeah. Uh, so you have a net adjustment of 29.5 negative, which means your new surplus for the year after correction is 46.4. Now you can put these two things across here to have one, one running column. That's perfectly fine. There's no one right format for this. Okay. Anyhow, let's take a look at part B real quick. Now, part B says, use the following form to prepare this, a statement showing the appropriation of undistributed surplus for the year ended 30th April 2023. The Board of Directors decided to transfer 12000 to the Education Statutory Reserve Fund. Okay. So, of course, they have a little format here. I'm going to pull up mine. Right. So, we're going to start with the corrected surplus of 46.4. Then, we are going to take into consideration that 12000 that they were talking about. Right, the transfer to the education fund. There's no other appropriation. So the undistributed surplus for the year is 34.4. And to that, we're going to add the 33.4 brought forward from last year, giving us 67.8 for the total undistributed surplus now being carried forward to the following year. Again, some people opt to add this item at the top. Uh, again, I've seen it done different ways. I like, I prefer this way. Your teacher may have a different opinion. That's perfectly fine. Okay, let's take a look at part C. Okay, so they asked for the, use the following form to prepare a classified statement of financial position in the order of permanence for this entity for that. So they give you this on a three-column format for 13 marks. 
right? So most people like a three column format. Some people like two. So uh, students ask me, so if they only, if they give me three columns and I only use two or one, what do I do? Just use what you're accustomed to using, okay? And the other question is, so if they only give me two columns and I, I like to use three, what do I do? Draw in your column, okay? Okay, let me scroll back up to the information real quick here. Okay, so as you can see, I head up, right? Name of the entity, name of the statement, periods which it applies. So we start with the non-current assets, right? Order of permanence means most permanent assets first. Okay, so buildings, investments, motor vehicles. Those are the three non-current assets, right? So buildings, there's no depreciation there. Investments, no depreciation. The motor vehicles was 140. The existing depreciation before was 20, but we depreciated by 30 this year. So you have to add that 20 and that 30 to get, to get 50. And 140 minus 50 is 90, right? If you need to see or need a refresh on how to do balance sheets, statements of financial position, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So check it out, all right? Uh, next, we're dealing with the current assets. So basically, these items here, right? Membership fees due, short-term loans to members, uh, and bank balance. I think it was just those three. Let's see. Will I be surprised, right? So short-term loans to members, right? Membership fees due. Prepaid expenses. I forgot the 500. The prepaid 500. Oh, good. Wow. All right. Uh, the bank balance of 40,400. And the total is 357,800. Right? Now, I'm adding the non-current and the current assets. I get total assets. And I'm going to start doing my current liabilities now. Now, I don't think I had any non-current liabilities. Right? So, I have accruals and members' deposits. So, I'm going to do accrued expenses, members' deposits. And that's my total liabilities. Again, if I had non-current liabilities, I'd show them first, then, in, then the current ones, right? Order of permanence. Uh, I'm going to subtract that. Now, some people say, so why are not showing working capital? Working capital does not always have to be shown. If you show it, cool. If you don't show it, no problem. Unless the question specifically asks for it, in which case, this question did not specifically ask for it. All right, let me just pull that back up to show you one more time, right? As you can see, there's no mention of working capital. It just says permanence, all right? Okay, going back to the information, right? So if you show your working capital, no problem. If you don't, not a problem, right? <clears throat> so the net assets is 726,800. Now that's financed by share capital and reserves. So share capital is 557. Then we have the reserves. So we have the education reserve, which was the, they started at 90 and we transferred the next 12. That's why we have 102. And then we have the undistributed service we got in the appropriation account above, 67.8. Adding those two together gives us 169.8 for total reserves. And adding that to the 557 gives us 726,800. And the total share capital and reserves is equal to the net assets. And your balance sheet balances. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That is the solution for question five from the May 2023 POA paper two. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more other videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful POA handles. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.